Liam, it's not uncommon for us to go in machine shops and see this amount of Haas machines installed and machining. Why do you think that is? Uh, I think they're, they're, they're good value for money, they're, they're good machines, they do what they say and yeah, can't really fault them. And what would be the oldest machine that you've got in here, do you think, roughly? I believe it's circa 95, it's the oldest one we've got. And obviously still running, still cutting material. What, what type of material are you cutting and what are you doing in this, in this cell or this machine shop? Well, we cut a range of materials from plastics um, to, to steel, stainless, exotics. I mean, a lot of our business is aluminium based. Um, so predominantly, I'd say about 80% of the material we cut is aluminium. We're going to go into the other machine shop in a minute where you've got the, the slightly newer Haas machines. As for these ones here, are, are they high speed? What, what, what sort of spec are, are the, uh, is the machinery in here? We've got a varied mix. We've got some with a 7,500 spindle. And then we've got quite a few with the 12,000 spindle and the high speed uh, tool changes and high speed machining enabled. Okay, now there's two things. The, what would have been the initial attraction, do you think, to the Haas machines and what keeps you going back for more? Um, I think probably the initial attraction was the, the costing for, for what you get. Um, and we keep going back because they're reliable, um, hold tolerance as well. We don't really have much, many issues with them. And when you do have those issues, it's very important for engineering companies like yourself to, to keep machining, whether it be 12, 24 hours a day, to get the response you need from their engineers. Yeah, um, a lot of the guys who come out are, are really helpful, knowledgeable chaps, and more than happy to help out where they can, and they carry a lot of stock on their vans. So parts are, are, are easy to get in and, and fix well, and it doesn't take long for them to get here. They're always innovating as well. You've seen their new five-axis machines. Yeah, I'd, I'd love a go on one of those, definitely. <laughs> Maybe one day. Now, we'll go into the new machine shop in a second. Before we do that, this is a good example here of the types of, uh, and the sizes of parts that you're machining. These are just aluminium uh, components, but quite a lot of metal removal. Yeah, uh, quite a lot of metal removal on that. We, uh, we use carbide cutters, um, high speeds, high feeds, and the machine copes really well with it. And what do you call high speeds and high feeds? Uh, so we, we run around about 10 to 12,000 spindle uh, RPM and generally, I mean, we have been going up to six metres a minute on the feed. It, it all depends on work holding and, and application, really. And is this a good example of what is going through your milling shop? Yeah, it's, it's quite a good example of the type of parts that we do do, yeah. OK, let's go into, uh, into your next machine shop with the slightly newer machines. So this is your third machine shop, or might be your first, I don't know which one you label it, but you've got three more Haas machines in here, the VFO, and you've got two VF2 SSs. When were these machine tools installed in here, and, and, and why did you go for the Haas again, but also the SS? Uh, these machines were installed in 2011. We, we, we went for Haas again based on the, the good results we've received with, with the other Hasses we've got. Um, so, yeah. And what I do like as well, behind you, you, we've got a lot of swarf in that machine. A lot of machine, machinists and machine shops clean their machines before we get in, but, but you're obviously too busy making, uh, making, making swarf yes. to, uh, to do that. Yeah, these machines are running right up until about now, so they should be full of swarf. Let's talk about this. What are you actually making on one of these VF2 SSs? Well, this is a cell body for a crash test dummy. Um, it's sort of more a five axis part, I would say, but we've achieved that with these three axes. Uh, VF2. And this is an anthropoleptic part? Yes, yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I've got the terminology wrong, but I know I was pretty close. <laughs> what, how, how long does it take you to make this? Uh, I think in, in all, there's four ops on that part, and in total, around about an hour and a half to two hours, I believe. And it comes out in one big billet? Yeah, yeah, one big billet. A lot, of metal, a lot of metal removal, hence the reason for that swarf in there, I believe. Yeah, uh, quite a lot of metal removal, definitely. And the other, t the other parts at the back here, what, what are they in relation to uh, anything to do with this? No, they're, uh, they're different parts that I've, I've been working on as, as alongside this part. Now, would you push these machines, these VF2 SSs, up to the maximum speed? Would you, would you run at 12,000 RPM? And what sort of feed rates would you, would you operate at as well? Uh, with the job I'm currently running, I do go up to 12,000 RPM. Um, do have a bit of 3D scanning on there. Feed rates wise, again, as, as much as we can get away with, really. Because you can be machining other material other than aluminium, can't you? Yeah, uh, we, we machine everything, really, and if, everything and anything. I always like to get an insight as well into what, what engineers think of the control systems on machines. There's lots of uh, 
different offerings from different manufacturers. What do you think and what do you obviously like about the Haas control system? Uh, it's, it's very simple to use. It's quite an easy machine to start on. Uh, I've had experience of Fanex as well and Yasnax. I have to say out of those three, Haas is, is definitely the most easy to use. Is your favourite choice and a fourth axis unit here, do you get the best use out of that as well? We try to, yeah. Uh, do, uh, use it a lot for indexing but we do do a reasonable amount of rotary machining as well. I'm going to say, looking at this part, it does look like it would fit perfectly on a UMC 750, doesn't it? It certainly does, yeah. I think that's next, maybe. Good stuff. Thanks, Liam. <laughs> Thank you.